Hey, good morning and welcome to Coach's Corner here on 93.7 FM, The Mix and 937themix.com. Sitting with the head football coach of the Wabasee Warriors, Coach John Reedaboo, Coach Kez Zinel, and I'm Bill Dixon. Coach, thanks for being here this morning. Good morning. Tell us a little bit about uh, your thoughts on last night's game over at Northwood. Well, uh, we started off the game as about as well as we could. Um, you know, we had a fumbled punt uh, that we recovered, and uh, we had a trick play up our sleeve that got us down to that was a the great 10, and, play. Uh, you know, we, we kind of stalled out a little bit there uh, in the red zone inside the ten, and uh, then we went to kick a field goal and mishandled the snap, and uh, ended up coming out of that with no points. And despite that, uh, we kept Northwood pinned down in their area and got the ball back at good field position i think it was like the 49 or 48 mm-hmm. after a punt and uh you know moved the ball a little bit but still did not come away with points and um i think i counted how many plays in we were before we gave up a big play and and, and it was 20 some play like 26 or 27 before we ba- gave up a big play um and you know I, I hate to sound like a broken record but we're still missing guys we're missing eight guys and two of them are dbs and that's right where they hit us mm-hmm. i mean they're throwing the ball over the top and they're going on the perimeter and um you know we have one guy that's a senior but he's a first year player and he's out there starting and he's coming off a two-week quarantine <laughs> uh, we have another kid that's a sophomore and and you know it's another kid that's a sophomore that went in during the game and then uh to compound that, uh, up on the offensive line, we have uh, two different guards than our starting guards. Uh, um, one's out quarantined and the other one's out sick. So it's kind of the story of our season so far is every game we go into, we're out eight to ten guys. And, uh, um, you know, the good thing about it is, uh, you know, we, we know that it's going to happen. And so the kids know they got to step up, next guy up, and, and we're going to go compete. Um, but the bad thing is it's hard to get a rhythm. It's hard to get uh, uh, things going. And, you know, you put your line together in the summer, and they work together, and they yeah. gel together, and they get used to, you know, when to come off of double teams and, and, and when to stay on it and things like that. And, and when you're exchanging, I mean, our right tackle uh, was out for several weeks for uh, sickness and quarantine, and uh, it, our both our guards were replacements so we had two guys in the offensive line that, you know, started the season out there. So, mm-hmm. you know, not to make any excuses, Northwood's a solid football team, and they took advantage of what they could take advantage of. And I felt like in the beginning of the game, we had pretty good energy. We really looked good yes, on defense. we did. And uh, we were moving the ball. Especially at the line. Yeah. You know, and it, we played most of that first quarter down at, it was in their territory. Absolutely. And you that know? was a huge change. Huge. That, yeah. Bill, how many times have we yeah. mentioned that on the air? Mm-hmm. About 50 billion times. Yeah, that we were wearing huge, the turf out change. on their end. Yeah. And, and that's great stuff because, you know, we had struggled with field position before. But as we got to the second quarter, then it seemed like it flipped. And, and we were in our own territory, giving them the ball with a short field. And uh, that was disaster for us. And that was bad news. But, you know what? Uh, I'll give our kids credit. Uh, they did not give up. They fought all the way to the end. And, you know, we had, uh, I think I was telling the coaches last night, we had about 32, 33 guys available to play last night. And for a 4A school, that's that's Not tough. very many. No. And that means a lot of guys are going two ways. Well, and, and Northwood and had easily three times that <laughs> Yeah, many. now they dress all their freshmen. Yeah, but still, yeah. they had three platoons out there warming yeah, up. Yeah, yeah. So they dress all their freshmen, so that looks that looks even you know more disproportionate. But uh, you know if we dressed our freshmen, we had thirty more guys out there. That mm. might look a little better, but yeah. uh, we don't do that. Um, so anyway, uh, they we had a lot of guys going both ways and playing special teams, and and you could tell by the end of the game, guys are pretty gassed, and and you know some of them just put their head down. Yeah. And, just bore through it and, yes, they and they're did. true warriors you know true warrior grit and they, and they just know they know that we don't have anybody else to put in there and and so they they just put their head down and get out there and do their job your Co- game had more success last night than it's had uh yeah. up until this point not just ringler who had a couple big runs but uh, your guys that are barreling through from the fullback spot really had uh, some uh, success uh finding some scenes and sometimes making their own scene yeah yeah just and that's vision that's a, mm-hmm. one of the most important things for a running back uh, is your vision um cameron zimmerman ran the ball very well last night he got the start and uh um you know he ran hard and uh 
He Randy did Trout. run hard. Oh, yeah. I mean, he when he would get hit the first time, he would carry a lot, Bill, several people with him, several yards. Yeah, yeah. So. And Brandon Kelly ran angry last night, and that's <laughs> that's the Brandon Kelly I know. And, and he ran really, really hard and, until his got, ankle got dinged up late there in the uh, end of the third quarter. Um, but those guys, uh, that's what we thought they could do. I mean, they're, they're solid running backs, and they're young. Yeah, you know they don't have a lot of starts under their belt, but uh, uh, they're getting there, mm-hmm. and uh, we liked what they they had to bring to the table. I think we had 180 some yards rushing, which is uh, uh, easily uh, our out yes. best output. Um, and then Ringler, Ringler's a threat. Yeah, and, and so teams can't just uh, focus on the running back. They they have to be aware that Ringler, if he gets to the perimeter, that's a problem, and uh, so that brings a whole other aspect to it, and and that's part of why we made the switch. So, mm-hmm. Coach Bill and I were asking several times during the game, how do you know which quarterback to use and when? That's got to be a. Do you get together with all your staff and say, hey, let's uh, know how do you do that? Actually, you know, the offensive coordinator and I talk about that, and. Um, Jackson's been under the weather a, a little bit. He sounds worse than I do. Uh, <laughs> and, um, you know, he's got a cold and something going on. And I uh, could just kind of tell in, in warm-ups that uh, he wasn't all the way there. And, uh, you know, the first quarter, um, we moved the ball a little bit, but we just weren't getting out of what we needed out of that quarterback position. And we felt like, you know, okay, let's – we have two quarterbacks. Let's try the other one. And we started moving the ball. And, and yeah. you know, it's kind of like going with the guy with the hot hand, you know. He was moving the ball. And as a senior, you know, he was, he was actually throwing the ball pretty well. Mm-hmm. And, and obviously his mobility is, is – uh, Well, that's his feature. I yeah. mean, that's his main feature. Yeah, that's excellent. And, you know, he was being a senior leader. And yeah. so that's what we went with for the rest of the game. And, you know, it was good to get on the board a couple times. And uh, we had some big plays. That 65-yard um, run yeah. that he made. Yeah, that I was mean, all that was, yeah. that was That was phenomenal. And how many, how many – he went oh. through, I think, 15 of their 11 guys <laughs> and, and, and hands on him. And he still outran them and outmaneuvered them. You know, that was uh, – If that's that guy had, had the film. angle, he'd have yes. been in the end zone. Yes, easily. And, you know, he's – He's a kid that we know he's our playmaker, and that's why we move him around so much to try to feature him in different places. And last night it happened to be quarterback, you know, in another game it might be receiver or whatever, but um, he is dangerous and he is shifty. And, you know, he's punt returner, he's kick returner, he's corner, he's quarterback, he's, you know, yeah. everything. And, and um, you know, he does it like a warrior. I mean, he is out there just plugging away and, you know, all the way to the end of the game. And, you know, he takes his shirt off. And he's got bruises all over the place. And <laughs> he, he probably weighs about 160 pounds. But he is solid muscle. And, and he, you know, he, he's very low-key, uh, very relaxed, even keel. And that's a great thing to have as yeah. quarterback, too. And, and I think he, he brought that to the table last night as well. Coach, one of the things that Bill and I were also impressed with last night was when he had the two touchdowns. I mean, okay, we're on about the three-yard line. Let's everybody – and, I mean, the, you know, they, they just pushed – the Northwood line back. Oh, enough, absolutely. Enough, I thought that was phenomenal. Yeah, I, I would say the, the, the middle part of our offensive line gets great push. And uh, what Northwood was doing is they had all their guys up on the line of scrimmage. Yes. And those outside guys were pinching <laughs> yeah. down. And, and that's when, you know, uh, you know, Mark and I talked. And it's like, uh, don't bother with the handoff. Because by the time he gets the handoff, <laughs> you know, those outliers are getting there right. and, and, and tackling him. Right. So just just take the snap and get right up in there. And, and it was very effective. And, and As a matter of fact, who, the, one, the big run was a uh, QB draw. Mm-hmm. And so... The yeah. line in the middle was getting a good push, and, and, and that was a, a positive. Um, it was just, you know, on perimeter plays or uh, pass protection, we had some slip-ups there, and, and they got to all be in sync, or, or you are going to have a hard time. Uh, give me the – who are those linemen? Again, I uh, – who's your Last center? night it yes. was uh, Aiden Merkler. Okay. Uh, we call him Cheese, Quentin Spitzmacher. Uh, yeah. che- cheese because he's always uh, smiling, not because he's from Wisconsin. Uh, oh, right? I like that name. It sounds like a cheese you would buy at some uh, deli store somewhere. Yeah. Spitzmacher Cheese. Yeah. Uh, Dryden Hernandez, he's our anchor. He's our leader on that uh, offensive line. He's our center. And, uh, you know, he, he gets everybody in position and calls out, you know, what the front is. Isn't and that great? Yeah. He is... He's a warrior, too. I mean, he just plugs away and does a great job. And sometimes he gets called for things just because he's so effective. You know, he's driving a guy down the field, and they feel yeah. like they, he must be doing something wrong uh, because of that, and he's not. Um, also, last night, we had David Anderson, 
who's about 165 pound guard. Normally a defensive starter. M- normally a mm-hmm. linebacker yep. for us, and you know he he battled away all night long and and was a warrior as well. And then uh, Nico Ramirez, he's also on our offensive line as well and has been all year. You know, one of the other things is the two touchdowns you scored. I mean, I, Bill and I talked about that. That I thought was huge. You know, you didn't come away without getting some offensive points. And uh, and I thought, you know, had things just been a little differently, I mean, this was a very, very <laughs> close, evenly matched, even though the score wasn't, the, the teams really looked very, very, what, compatible together. A- absolutely. And, and that was what we were talking about all week long. And, and even when we started uh, delving in the scouting report, and, and I'll be honest with you, even last Saturday after we were done with the Concord game, was like, hey, you know, this is a Northwood team that, you know, we can play with. Yeah. We, we definitely uh, can turn things around on this game and, you know, selling that to the kids and, and, and getting them to believe because I think, you know, you, you get to this point in the season, uh, you know, some guys start to wonder and doubt and, and not have confidence. And, you know, I talked before about kids are like a half a step away or, or mm, almost yes. made the play. And that that's just lack of trusting what you see and, and, and being confident. And when you're confident and you trust what you see, you're going to make that play. To and, that end, on that QB draw that you were talking about, and a couple other times I'm thinking, especially um, in the second half, you had situations where rather than just the pure power that you were referring to to the middle of the line, you had situations where your line opened holes that were significant, and uh, Wabasi was able to go through the hole and make something. You know, the, the, the three-yard quarterback, the three-yard uh, quarterback into the end zone with Ringer. Yeah. That was just pure power. Yeah, you had real orchestration going out there with those guys too, and the timing that was developing. Yes. You could see on at least one occasion where the back delayed just a half a second to wait for the hole to get just a little bit better, and then he was gone. Yeah, and that doesn't that doesn't just happen. Snap your fingers. That that was really nicely coordinated. I thought there was real progress yeah. there yeah uh, you, the guys did a good job especially with plugging in people mm-hmm. and, and really especially had, in that situation yeah we had three guys that normally weren't in there yeah. so um yeah we're just looking for consistency you mm-hmm. know we we do that for a play or two and then then we break down a little bit and we need consistency and uh you know the running backs ran hard but they you know they're again as a coach you're always looking at everything we we still miss some holes mm-hmm. you know we miss some places where uh you know uh, or inside zone, it's it's an A-gap to A-gap play. And uh, very early in the game, uh, one of our running backs had his head down. Had he had his head up and yes. just looked backside, he had a gigantic hole. And that's what we're looking for. And the, and the line did that. And, and so, you know, we're just looking for consistency and, and starting, you know, getting that experience as a running back and getting that experience as a lineman, those are all very important. And when we get consistency, we're going to be pretty tough to beat. You know, I saw it was interested in Ringler too. He was the passes that he did complete. I mean, they were always, he would stay in the pocket and yeah. then run out and he was throwing the ball both the, both sides while he was running. Yeah. I mean, this is a high school kid. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He, you know, that was, that was excellent. He, he, he actually throws better on the run. Does he really? Yeah. <laughs> but he was spinning that ball last night. He definitely was. And you could see it in warm up. He was spinning the ball. And, um, you know, I think he's, he knows what his role is and he knows that, he could be called upon at any point in time, and he's a senior, and and he wants to make the most of his senior year. Yeah, and he's doing that. Yeah. So, Coach, is. who have you got with us then for the rest of the program today? Uh, today we got Coach Nick Feldman, who's uh, new to us this year, and uh, later on we're going to have Lucas Ringler in here to talk a little bit about Warrior football. All that coming up here on the Coach John Rita Show here on ninety three point seven ahead in the mix and nine three seven the mix dot com. And welcome back to the Coach John Reedaboo Show here on 93.7 FM The Mix and 937themix.com. Coach, who did you bring for uh, one of our guests today? Today we have Nick Feldman. Nick uh, is a social studies and business teacher here at the high school, first year guy, and uh, uh, he works with our freshmen and JV mostly. And um, Nick is uh, new to us from Tippy Valley. Um, and, uh, you know, we're glad to have him on board. Uh, Nick. Uh, why don't you tell us about your high school career and then, uh, you know, take us from there through college and, and how you got here. 
Yeah, so like you said, my name's Nick Feldman. I am a teacher here at Wawasee. I teach social studies and business. I originally went to high school at Tippecanoe Valley. While I was there, I was an outside linebacker. I was a fullback, you know, starting three years. So I definitely, that's the positions that coach has me coaching right now. And I'm loving everything about those positions. I'm loving everything, learning what, you know, this school does different and learning new ways to improve my coaching from here. Uh, after high school, I went to PFW where I majored in education and social studies and I minor, minored in psychology and sociology. Wow. Yeah, that's a, that's a full boat there. I'd say so. <laughs> Talk about what you bring from Tippecanoe Valley to Wabasee because when you come from the land of Rita Price, you bring a lot of misdirection type football, right? The TRC, that's what Tippecanoe Valley is part of really that's what it's all about down there right yeah um yeah so at valley you know it's definitely different as far as the my biggest thing that i'm struggling with coming here is the is the names of the plays i know them, but they're definitely different here <laughs> uh, and, terminology yep yeah yep, th that's always different and it's you know getting Getting used to all of that, uh, as far as coming from Valley, you know, it's all about speed. It's all about, you know, hitting the holes. Doesn't matter. Just hitting that as hard as you can, keeping your eyes up and being aware. And that's one thing that, you know, you guys talked about a little bit ago. But, you know, that is one thing for fullbacks that I want to make sure that they keep doing because they keep their eyes up. They're hitting those holes hard. As far as, you know, the linebackers go, making sure you're getting those reads early on and then flying to the ball, flying to it no matter where it is on the field. Uh, you know, don't be staying around. You know, play with energy, play with a purpose. Yeah. Hey, uh, you had a unique experience the first game of the season. Uh, tell us about that when uh, after our first uh, varsity game that Saturday. Uh, where did you get to travel to? Right back to Tippecanoe Valley. <laughs> yeah, this is the first year ever that we played Tippecanoe Valley. It just happens to be your first year here. And, um, and tell us what that experience was like. Yeah, so I mean, it wasn't even you know being a JV coach. It wasn't even playing here. I got to go all the way back to Valley. So. Did you get your passport stamped before you go? You got to make sure, you know, you get the shots. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Before you oh, travel yeah. that far down State Road 25. Did, did they strip your TV off of your uh, shirt? or? Oh, yeah. It was, Burn you an effigy uh, at the uh, yard line. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, we went back to Valley, and, you know, we came out, and, you know, being my first game coaching for JV, I wasn't sure what to expect. But jumping right in there and being defensive coordinator – just kind of making sure we are getting, you know, we're getting them doing the things that they need right now as far as, you know, the bare essentials. Being prepared to get up to the high school level, we just ran a base defense out there, and we came out and we looked really good for the first game. And, you know, knowledge of the football game is what really – helped us win that game yeah. they had a backwards lateral pass that they dropped and kind of stood there and from the sidelines all of us coaches yelling screaming pick up the ball mm -hmm. somebody finally heard us picked it up and ran it all the way back and beat them by a touchdown and you know that was such an amazing experience and i loved being able to be a part of that especially at you know valley so yeah you're a freshman and a jv coach primarily talk about how much of that work is just raw fundamental education about football and how much of that is if i'll, I'll put it this way the wabasi system or what wabasi uh, how wabasi approaches football differently to other schools yeah so as far as fundamentals fundamentals across the board i think from school to school to school will all be pretty much the same and is that base? do you spend more time with that or do you spend more time with the Wabas see wrinkles of, of, of the fundamentals. So on the freshman level, I mainly focus on the fundamentals. I 
on defensive days, I specifically have the freshman linebackers. Mm -hmm. And I will go through and I spend the entire individual linebacker time just going through reads, making sure you have your right steps, making sure you're just not looking at the quarterback waiting on something to happen because, you know, this isn't middle school football anymore. This is high school football. They're going to have some trick plays. you got to make sure you're doing your right reads. As long as you do that, you will be right where you need to be. Um, as far as fullbacks go, you know, this isn't – the hole's going to open up right where you need to be. You need to – Make sure you're adapting to the playing field that's coming up. Um, so, on and the, that's something you would teach no matter where you were, no matter what team you yes, were. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> then, as far as you know, the Wallace C way goes, I don't necessarily focus on you know the freshmen making mm -hmm. sure that they're doing exactly what the varsity's doing right, in right. the coming week weeks. But I make sure that I try to get with the JV guys before the games and say hey we know our rules this week we need to know what we are doing and i'm making sure i'm reaching out so they know what they are doing because you know we don't have very much depth on jv you know going out there 13 14 guys you know they need to know their rules so that you know we're not having to run down the field chasing everybody and we're getting worn out in the first quarter yeah, and we have our individual periods together. The freshmen are with the, the varsity. So mm -hmm. when we have individual time, uh, which a lot of times is working on those fundamentals and technique, we're all together. Mm -hmm. And so you might have a massive linebacker group or a, a large receiver group, and any time we can take advantage of you know splitting the coaches and taking this group and this group and getting more reps out of the – that is yeah. something we try to take advantage of. Absolutely. Gotcha. So that's that's kind of how that works. Nick, uh, you are uh, almost a midterm of your yep. first trimester. Let's talk about your teaching experience and how that's going. Oh, it, it's going great. I love teaching here and the community and the kids that I – they're not kids anymore. They're high schoolers. They are young men and women, and being involved in their lives and being able to, you know, have those conversations, it, it's – I spent most of my time in college. I actually was a classroom aide for a middle school student teaching. I did middle school and, you know, I really thought, you know, that might be what I wanted to do when I got, you know, got out and I came here and I really love high school. I don't think I'd ever go back to middle school, being able to build those relationships with the high schoolers and, you know, being a part of their lives because as high school teachers we are a huge part of their lives and seeing them grow every single time every single day is such an amazing you know it's amazing part of teaching it's why i got into teaching and i love it and you know coming up on midterms you know the kids are doing young men and women are they're doing great and you know no complaints here um you know when you're coaching it, it gives you another view of kids it, it gives it you a, another uh environment to make influences on kids talk a little bit about that and how how that kind of works for you as far as football as opposed to in the classroom yeah so in the classroom you really you try to build relationships with people and you know some people let you in let you know let them they'll let you be a part of their life but on the football field it's almost a given you have you are an extremely important part of their life you are somebody that they look up to you are somebody who is a leader in their life so you know being out on the football field you have to be at your best 24 7 that's not to say in this classroom you don't either but you know you have to be a lot more proactive out in the football field because you constantly have every single person looking at you and you know you have to be on top of your game because you make a mistake in the in the practice week and you know that will come out friday nights and it confuses everyone so you have to make sure you're on top of everything and the classroom you know some of the kids you know especially since it's midterm you're still working on building those relationships and you're still working on getting you know them excited about your class no matter how hard you try some people don't want to you know necessarily be there but you know what you keep fighting doesn't matter football field in the classroom you keep fighting you keep doing what you know is best and you know it will come
Very good. We have a very strong Pee Wee and junior high program here. We got a lot of uh, adults that are very active year after year after year, and we run a lot of kids through that program. Is that program working for you, for the linebackers, for the fullbacks? Do you see those kids coming in as having the requisite knowledge and experience that you would expect for kids that have gone through a program like that? Yeah, so as you know, I don't have a whole lot of experience with the Pee Wee mm-hmm. uh, system here, but as far as what I can see on the freshman and JV levels, um, yeah, absolutely the Pee Wee system is doing great. You know, making sure, you know, people are, you know, getting to where they need to, especially in the Pee Wee. That's the biggest thing. Get to that ball no matter what. And I'm really seeing that, especially in on the defensive side and on the offensive side, if you make a mistake, just run hard. Run. You know, one yard's better than negative three. And I, I do I do see that, and I definitely think that's coming from Pee Wee, you know, teaching them early. Get something out of nothing. I so. don't know. One yard's better than negative three. It sounds to me like you've gone through the Cavs Zinal math curriculum right there. <laughs> right there, one step, and it's already done. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Hey, Nick, talk a little bit about the coaching staff. Uh, You know, you've been introduced to a whole new circle of guys and what that's like. Uh, But you got to be nice to your head coach. Remember, he's your boss. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, wow. Yeah, that's – no, the coaching staff here is great. It's like nothing else. And, you know, especially in my first year, and I was fully prepared to, you know, do this, is especially in my first year, I – I want to learn as much as I can from them. That was the most important part to me coming into this year was, you know, not jumping in and, you know, messing anything up with anybody. I wanted to make sure I learned everything from week to week to week. And prior to JV games, I even go up to, you know, Coach Zapes and I go, hey, defensively, what are you seeing out there? What did you see? You know, learning from what he has to say. Um, and I mean, especially with the JV and freshman guys, it, it's fun playing with them. It's fun coaching with them. You know, everyone on this team, coaching staff, has so much to teach me, and every single week, I am so much better for it. And yeah, I love I love everybody here. It, it that's great. Um, you've had some exciting experiences already. You know, returning to your hometown, Tippy yeah. Valley, and and getting the the victory there. And then uh, Thursday night had a pretty exciting game a freshman game with concord and uh talk a little bit about that we want to give the freshman a little shout out yeah so the freshman did great thursday night you know the game kind of started off a little slow they opened up on their opening drive with a touchdown and main thing there was you know keeping their spirits up keeping them going keeping the energy up and they really did they came out and that second half and really just knocked everyone's socks off. They played with so much energy, hustling everywhere they needed to, and you know, especially the throwing game was majorly there. They they made sure they knew their routes and you know the communication, especially with them in the huddle, helped out tremendously. That that was amazing and the the game winning touchdown was awesome. Staying there on that sideline. Yep. With, and watching them do that so yeah it was so much fun watching all the coaches get together and you know devise you know what's going on and you know that was awesome yeah well, coach was. feldman i want to thank you for coming in and being Absolutely. with us we're going to come back here in just a moment with lucas ringler from the wabasi high school football team here on coach's corner on 93.7 fm the mix and 937themix.com And welcome back to Coach's Corner on 93.7 FM The Mix and 937themix.com. Hoping to, uh, talking to the head football coach for the Wabasi Warriors, Coach John Ridaboo. And Coach, tell us who you've brought in uh, for our next piece. I brought in Lucas Ringler. Uh, Lucas uh, wears a lot of hats uh, on the football field, unlike the uh, pink, uh, I don't know what that is, uh, pink teddy Some bear Some sort of hat. Japanese yeah. emoji bear, yeah. it looks like. Yeah. <laughs> Not real sure about that one, but anyway... Um, <laughs> Lucas is, uh, you know, last year Cam Salazar kind of did this for us. Uh, returner, punt returner, kick returner, uh, DB, uh, 
played on offense, and, and Lucas fills a, a lot of roles for us. And I'll tell you what, he's a true warrior. Warrior grit is is defined by uh, what Lucas does every uh, Friday night. So, uh, Lucas, glad to have you here. Um, uh, let's talk about last night. Uh, first of all, uh, we made the switch, put you at quarterback. Were you? Uh, did you know that was going to happen? Were you mentally prepared for that? And, and what was your approach when you took over? Uh, I kind of had, like, a feeling that it could happen at any point during the season during the game and I know I had to be ready for it and basically it's always just in the back of my head to know all the plays and just be ready to execute them as I go yeah you know coach O has prepared you for that and and we've talked uh quite a bit you know we will plug you back in at quarterback and um you know we got a lot of movement uh, when you came in at quarterback and it's kind of going with the guy with the hot hand uh, you know we're getting movement and we're getting moving the ball down the field and uh, tell us about your exciting uh, uh, quarterback draw that went down the sideline and um, you know I, I thought for sure you're going to score I didn't think anybody was going to catch you <laughs> yeah um, I really didn't think I was going to make it even a few yards past the line of scrimmage but managed to get outside and I think I was a little I, if I was a little bit faster I definitely would have broke that one for a touchdown uh, he had a good angle and and you know that they're they're well coached and he took a good angle but uh, you know great play and, and that put us in position to score which you know you had the opportunity to go the other way as far as that was more of a power play for you to get in the end zone than uh, uh, you know perimeter where you're just making moves and he does a really good job of setting up his blocks he's got great hips which you look for in a runner and he'll he'll be inside and then he'll bounce it real quick and and, and that's what part of what makes him such a dangerous runner but then you go down and, and we get down to about what the three yard line two yard line and uh uh we go to um a sneak and talk about that because we haven't done that all season what you and, and dryden did and, and i thought that that was good great work on your part yeah we just figured the uh starting our normal pistol stance just Sometimes it just gets a little risky being that far back. So just in the huddle, Dryden said, you want to go under center? I'm like, we might as well try. Can't hurt. So we did it, and it worked perfectly. Yeah, and, and you know, we noticed during the game as well, you know, the, even the second trip down, that uh, by the time we caught the snap, made the handoff, it wasn't the front push. The front push, they were they were getting a great push. It was the outliers coming in from the side and getting there. And so, you know, after you did that, we recognized that as well as that, you know, we're, we're probably better off just having him go under there. And those guys hadn't practiced that. And so yeah. that's wow. kids just taking the initiative of, of recognizing a situation. And you and Dryden have a great relationship. Yeah. Uh, talk about that a little bit. We've played four years of high school football together, and we just – we know how <clears> – <throat> how each other benefit and we just sometimes we can just look at each other and know what we're, we're thinking without even having to say anything that that's that's something that comes from guys that are four years in the program plugging away you know they can make a decision like that because they're used to each other and they got each other's back and and um you know dryden and and lucas are both captains and so um last night just you know lucas has been doing this all season but last night i mean this guy <laughs> he's returning kicks he's returning punts he's he's playing corner uh at one point you know we had to move him over to uh cover a guy that was hurting us because he's the more, more experienced guy and i don't recall did he get any more passes completed to him after uh, that i don't think so yeah so lucas shut him down and um uh, talk about the uh our, our play uh, where you go in motion and, and, and throw the ball because these guys are really excited about that trick play that we did. So. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it just takes the part of me being able to catch and run a ball and then also adding the fact that I can throw it. So it puts a team in a bind. Are you going to try and cover me from running or are you going to try and protect the guys downfield? And teams usually can't do both, so it's whatever works. Yeah, it, it would have been nice to – stick that in the end zone and and we weren't able to do that and and then uh you know uh, but we were able to move the football and you were able to score twice last night yeah and and talk about the 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 second uh drive where we end up scoring where you ended up scoring really that drive was like we just had to do it we had nothing to lose at that point we knew we were down big and any score just helps the team morale helps us from not going to the locker room super uh down on ourselves 
but to continue fighting and continue scoring, the team starts to believe that we can really we can score on anyone. Absolutely. Uh, that drive was a little different than your other drive. Your other drive, uh, the biggest part of that was your big run. Yeah. Um, this drive, you had to dot the ball all over the place, which I thought you did a really good job last night. Yeah, I just, I really just had to find, I know we have playmakers. You just got to put that ball in their hands, and I knew we had to do that. So we just had to give it to a whole bunch of guys and let them do the work that they've been working all season for. Yeah, I want you to talk a little bit about Warrior Grit, what that means to you, and the example you're setting for the young guys. It's just it's just been our motto these last few years. Just no matter what you're going through, whether it's good, bad, or in between, you just you got to fight through it through every play, every down. And we've just been raised on it going through high school, and we know that through injuries, through bad plays, you just get back, forget about it, and play the next down. Excellent. Excellent. Good title. I, I was just going to ask one of the questions I really was wondering is how fast you run the hundred. What you not not in not in football gear, but do you have time? Because I know mine was really fast without the football gear on. Yeah, I don't know about my hundred. Um, I definitely know my forty times, probably in the four fours, high four fours. Oh, but wow. yeah, I need to look work on that uh, hundred condition a little bit. <laughs> no, nobody does that anymore. Come on, you know that that is talk about old school. But that, that one sixty five yard run. That was phenomenal. I mean, Bill and I talked. We talked about that a lot on the mm-hmm. after it was done. And it was that, the turning of the corner. That, that was. Yeah. yeah, you're exactly right. And you, you know, you talk about needing to be able to do stuff so you don't get down. Mm-hmm. I mean, I thought. Don't you think that that really raised the morale oh, that yeah. that run and the kids? Boy, when they came back, I thought they were really excited. Oh yeah, you could definitely. The second that I stepped out of bounds, I just looked back and I saw the sideline just hooting and hollering, just all excited. They're all charging towards our. Uh, end zone i knew that we definitely had something going we can definitely capitalize off that run how how does that make you feel as a player too when you see the sideline you run oh it feels amazing i mean at least the first before that it wasn't there wasn't too much energy but the second i looked back and just saw the whole sideline the stand just erupting it definitely gives you a feeling of wow you're really doing this And, and you see the impact you make as a player making great plays that that gets guys going and then it raises their level of play and that's part of being a senior and a captain uh being a playmaker and and i remember remember at one point in time in the game you know you you, you fair caught a punt and, and I was like hey take that yeah. take that and you're a playmaker make a play yeah. and and you know punt returning is hard I did it I know what it's like sometimes <laughs> you got no blocking and you get smeared and 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 you, you just holding on the ball is a challenge and and other times you can surprise teams and and you know we told him all week you know if it, if it looks muddy if it looks bad you know just fair catch it save us the bounce and things and I know that's what was going through his mind but I also know he's a playmaker that's why he's back there and he can make something out of nothing sometimes and and just like this big 64 yard run I was like hey <laughs> you don't be afraid to go ahead and take that and try to make a play because I know you're going to be electric and I know it's going to happen for you. Lucas, it, in modern football, we we talk about specializations and more and more players specialize to the point where you may be a lineman but only a, a, a third down lineman. I mean, you may it, that kind of thing. You're a real throwback in that you cover an incredible amount of responsibilities mm-hmm on the field what responsibilities come the easiest for you and which ones come the hardest for you probably the easiest for me is just having football iq i mean i've grown up watching football since i was five six years old and as the game grows you start to learn just the intricate little details and so just knowing how players react just all over the field and knowing their tendencies comes to be the easiest I'd say the hardest is just the nitty gritty stuff of each individual position. Just knowing that, especially in the seasons that we've had, you just you never know what position you could be playing coming into the next week, and just knowing those roles in each different play could be the hardest. I think you hit on something very important. It's football knowledge. Um, mm-hmm. You know, back when I was a kid, you know, everybody watched football, and, and you know, everybody went to Friday nights uh, games as kids, and you were ball boys and things like that, and you were heavily involved, and you played in middle school, and your group played together all the way through, and uh, that that's kind of been a struggle with this class. I mean, you guys are the nitty gritty, the, the guys that have stuck it out since your freshman year, and in your freshman year, you guys got lumped in with the JV, and uh, you know, you didn't have a lot of great experiences that freshman year, and you guys 
persevered through that and worked through that and gained that. And so guys like you and, and Dryden and Logan, you know, you guys have been through the battles and through the wars, and, and this is your senior year, and so you want to make the most of it. And, and, and that shows in your play. And so yeah. we as coaches appreciate that and, and the example that you're showing the younger guys because we're playing a lot of them, aren't we? Yeah, we are, definitely. And so, um, you know, with those younger guys – um, talk about your legacy and, and what you want to leave to them so we have better seasons and so we have more guys like Lucas Ringler in the program. You just, at least going into this season, we all knew whether we lose every game or we win every game and go win state title, you just got to play every game like it's your last game because I know how it's felt to be a junior last year watching those seniors take their final snap, and it, it hurt me just to be a junior watching that and knowing that it's my senior season and it could be the last time I step foot on a football field. You just got to know you have to play every down like it's your last. Yeah, absolutely. And and I hate to say it, but we got COVID looming too, and we never know when something like that might uh, enter the fray. And um, last thing I'm going to ask you about, because I know we're running uh, low on time, is uh, – Talk about what it's been like dealing with all the sickness, quarantine, and a couple injuries here and there. Yeah, it's definitely tough because, like I said, we never know what's happening the next day. And I think most of the players know how it is. You never know walking in the locker room who's going to be there, who's not going to be there. And everyone just got to be ready going practices and games. Just Everyone has to be ready to play. That's got to have made that football IQ that you talk about even more important. Yeah, it definitely does because – knowing the game and knowing how it works you you start to know that whether you're put in as wide receiver running back tight end that knowing the game you start to learn the plays way easier than anyone else well lucas i appreciate you coming by and being with us good luck as we get ready to take on plymouth here on friday night for homecoming we'll talk about the plymouth rockies and what they bring to the field next here on the coach john Reedabu show on 93.7 fm the mix and 937themix.com We're uh, at the uh, Coach John Reedaboo Show on 93.7 FM The Mix and 937themix.com. Coach, this week we return to the friendly confines of Warrior Field. Homecoming game this Friday night as we take on Plymouth here at uh, Wabasee. Homecoming. Some coaches think it's a great deal. Some coaches think it's a horrible distraction. Yeah. And what do you think? Oh, that's a good question. Um, you know, I, I've been I've coached with a lot of guys over the years and uh, – we used to do a whole lot more, and I think with this COVID time, we're, we're not able to do as much as we used to do. I mean, we'd had powder puff games right, right. and all kinds you know, oh, yeah. bonfires and things like that. And I don't think we do as much of that anymore, and that's kind of sad a little bit. Um, it can be distracting, and you try to stress to your team that, you know, have fun with it, but understand the whole reason behind everything is the game. Right. And, and that's the, the, the most important thing and the mm -hmm. biggest focus and you know you got guys coming back that uh, played here at Wawasee and and you know you want to put a, on a good show for them and you got people coming back that went to school at Wawasee and you want to put a good show on for them and uh, bottom line is we want to win we all want to be feeling good after that game and celebrating and uh, you know if you are distracted and you're not paying attention during the week and you don't have the right mental focus uh that could blow up on you and you could walk away from that evening uh not in the best of spirits historically plymouth an extremely tough run-based football program that loves to go three yards in a, in a cloud of dust this year <laughs> however last night they had serious problems with mishawaka what Plymouth team is coming to see who are we going to see <laughs> uh, on Friday night well Plymouth uh it has run the flex bone yeah um which we know pretty well that's you know, right we, we had Fairfield in the uh summertime playing flex bone and then of course every year Warsaw and Mishawaka back to back is flex bone uh so they've shown some flex bone they've also shown some spread um <laughs> so uh we'll have to prepare for both uh which which one they're going to come with but um they they are looking for answers too and uh, I've talked to uh, Coach Barron a couple times, and uh, they've had the quarantine and the sickness, and uh, uh, they're dealing with uh, low numbers. Uh, they canceled their freshman season before the season started, not enough kids. Uh, wow. Their JV season is... Uh, um, Tenuous? Yes. Mm -hmm. Very good word, they got a C team going, and uh, they're... 
They're C putting, team being when you take your freshman, you bring them up to JV. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. You play them all right. together, and and so um, you know they're struggling over there um, and, and trying to find an identity, and and you know you look and compare, and and we both compare pretty favorably. So um, for our kids, this is an opportunity for us to go out there and prove to everybody this is what we can do and get on the right track and get that winning feeling and know how good that feels and want to keep that going and mm-hmm. so um you know all week long we got to be focused uh there like you said there's homecoming activities and things like that but the bottom line is we want to get a w on friday night and um you know plymouth is going to fight you oh, they're yeah. not going to lay over and die and you know it doesn't matter what they're dealing with they're going to play you hard and and we're going to have to play hard and play well to win that football game coach i was just thinking uh how what specifically are you going to do this week to you know prepare yourself for Plymouth? I well, mean, what? Yeah, every game. You, I don't want to know how many hours you spend watching Plymouth well, film. I mean, you know, yeah. Uh, this, people just don't realize this, do they? Yeah, you no, know. Yeah. And, and then you got to you got to think. Well, now and you take all this to your assistant coaches, and you say, hey, and you discuss it, and then you have to come up with some kind of a plan. Uh, you know, I know you've seen Plymouth film already oh, yeah. because this is, uh, you know, this is the day after. So, yeah, I mean, you've, you've already <laughs> spent we, we've two seen million a hours. Plymouth film. Um, we'll really dive into it uh, this weekend and Monday, you know, we'll put it out to the kids. Um, you know, typically after a Friday night game, you know, we come back here and, and we talk about some things in the game. And then a lot of coaches will go home, including myself, and uh, uh, break down some of the the plays last night and and go over that with the kids today on you know what we need to fix what we need to do better and and also uh point out the positives you know this this is good this is what we need more of um we try to keep it to about 10 10 uh clips per side of the ball you know offense defense special teams not trying to overload them yeah i mean we used to and and some coaches do this i i don't think this is uh uh, productive but some coaches will you'll watch a whole half and then you'll watch part of the second half and and, you know the kids are tired they were up late and and they're they're beat up a little bit and their focus is not there so uh, typically what we do is uh we'll watch you know defense and offense and special teams and then you know okay you know get your rest and 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 let your body recover relax and and monday the focus has got to be on plymouth in the next game and so, you, so you don't play you have sunday off sunday no you know, uh, i mean the no, kids a lot are, of coaches uh you know they I mean, work on not, saturday and sunday and they're what and, about the kids the kids they have yeah they they after saturday once they leave uh yeah they have off until monday yeah now um coaches no never <laughs> no no that's and people and of course you that's 24 7 yeah and of course you get extra bonus time for that right it's oh that, yeah, yeah, yeah. Time, and, it was time and a half or is it yeah we don't time? have to come into school gonna... till yeah no um coaches will typically you know we we already got the film we already got the roster oh, yeah. too deep uh we've exchanged that already um and coaches start breaking that down and, and, and putting that into uh, their plans uh, today yes. and uh, s- Sunday. And then Sunday evening we meet, and that's something that's come out of COVID. We meet uh, Google Meet. We don't, oh, really? we, don't, we don't have to come in. We used to come in yeah. on Sundays, and I always hated that. I always hated taking away from family, family. And, and, and you know church and all that stuff and so we meet in the evening on sunday evenings and uh, uh you know kind of discuss each coordinator uh what what wow. our plans are and what we're thinking mm-hmm. and what we saw and and kind of put a plan together and then that's a whole presentation on monday yes. so monday is mental monday and so the kids come in and uh each uh side of the ball makes their presentation and it, it includes uh personnel it includes this is how we're going to line up uh it includes um what they like to do uh and film clips of what they do and so we'll do a defensive segment about 20 minutes and then we'll get them on their feet and have them do some exercises coach galan will have them working there and then we'll do an offensive session and then we'll get them on their feet have them doing some exercises get the blood flowing so they don't get sleepy and and bored and Mm -hmm, things like that mm -hmm. and then we'll do a special teams and then we'll go outside and uh we'll do uh, a couple of uh um it depends on what we need that week sometimes it's a group thing sometimes it's uh uh install of a new play or uh in 
this week, I, I don't know if you guys noticed, we played a different defense. We mm-hmm. played a 3-4 defense, yep. and we've been a 4-4 all front. season. So, um, you know, we, we had a defensive install, and we'll, we'll do individual period, too, and work on some of those fundamentals and technique. And, and you so, talk about a three-man front that you, you ran at Northwood. That meant your linebackers, you stunted a lot. You brought a lot of linebackers. Yeah. And uh, I got to believe that with Plymouth, uh, that's, that's going to be something that remains in the Warrior playbook. Well, I'll be honest with you. The reason, the biggest reason why we switch is because of lack of depth. Yeah, it didn't have we, enough people. We're, we're missing linemen, and we've been yeah. missing linemen. Yeah. And we are, we're having to have our offensive linemen play a lot of defense. And so uh, Dryden and yeah. Logan they're, they're the and, and Cheese and right. all those guys are, are going both ways. And, and it was taken away from our offense, and it was taken away from our defense that – um, you know, these guys are getting gassed and going both ways. So I think part of the production you saw last night was we didn't have to do that as much. We pretty much had our defensive linemen and, and a few rotated here and there. but not Just the n- removing of one defensive lineman made your rotation such that everyone had a greater opportunity for rest. Absolutely. And it made us faster. Mm-hmm. It made us a lot faster. We have four linebackers out there and, and um, you know, that made us a lot faster too. And, you know, the kids are still getting used to it. And so there were some errors. There were some, uh, uh, you know, missed coverages. There were some things that we were uh, out of our responsibility area, you know, your gap and things like that. But that'll come, um, you know, one week into it. We're, sure. We're, we're, we're committed to this, and we feel like it fits our personnel a lot better. Um, going into the summer, uh, we had it all mapped out and who's going to play where and who's going to do what and, you know, uh, over time, over you know, just the end of the summer, you know, we had an injury, we had somebody yeah. that didn't come out that was supposed to, and you know, so on and so forth. So um, we've had to adjust, and you know, when you're zero and four, uh, you're looking at what can we do to yes. put us in better position. What can we do to take advantage of what we have? What are we dealing with? Uh, you know, okay, we don't have enough linemen. We're rotating guys in and out. Guys are getting gassed. When you're, you know, Jimmy Johnson, the old quote, fatigue makes cowards of us all um, <laughs> when you get fatigued i mean you just yeah. don't have anything left you can't do anything and so uh we thought about it and discussed as coaches you know what can we do to better suit our personnel and keep those linemen a lot fresher throughout mm-hmm. the game and, and so that's what we came up with and um you know i think it's going to benefit us in the long run and i think it's something we're going to stick with for a while having yep. fewer kids available to you is given some opportunities for some young men who might not see <laughs> yes. varsity football in particular i'm thinking last night alexander i'm thinking mons i'm thinking uh uh four um uh Oh, I can't think of it. <laughs> uh, you know how good this makes yeah, you feel. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you saw Linder on the field at right. times. You saw Tinky on the field. Yes. You had a. You Those had are a, a lot of sophomores. Bon Trager Russell. was on the oh, field. Yeah. Brady, Ru- Brody Russell. Brady Russell. Brady Russell. He's a junior. Yeah, yeah Brady's yeah. a junior. But you know, we got uh, a bunch of juniors that haven't seen a lot of varsity time, so they're mm-hmm. first year varsity guys, and and you you hope they're ready for the battles. But you know, there's experiential things, situations that. You know they haven't seen and and then we have add in that guys have been out yeah. we had two dbs out last night a starting corner and a yeah. starting safety and and <laughs> so we have uh you know dom holler bless his heart first year playing football been on covid quarantine for two weeks oh my gosh and he's in the fire he is covering uh, number 24 who's about six <laughs> oh, three six JJ. four and, well, yeah jj the guy that scored yeah oh yeah. my god yeah, yeah. so well, good lord uh, he's gonna get there he's a heck of an athlete and he's a kid that really wants to play and, and do well and um you know i got a text from him last night and and you know it, it, it's kind of it's heartwarming you know they want to do well they want to please and you know he's like i i played terrible and it's like hey dom you know you're all right you know we 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 just got to get you there and it it's too bad that you come off a two-week quarantine yeah but our other corner got quarantined so now you're in in the now you don't have a choice and you're going against a team that's going to throw at you Mm -hmm. and and so um that was rough and and so and then on the other side of the ball you got Lucas Ringler who's a warrior just going at it you know oh my uh, and then there's times when Lucas couldn't go and then we had Linder in there who is a sophomore um, in the back end you know you had Brady Russell you mentioned and and then Tinky who's a a sophomore mm-hmm. as well and mm-hmm. um, and then we got Alexander uh, who's a junior but he didn't play with us last year he was in Florida last year and so you got a lot of new faces that have not been 
a, a part of the program and a part of what we've been doing out there, uh, plugging away and, and, and fighting hard and, and um, you know, linebacker position. You mentioned Mons and mm-hmm. Kelly played quite a bit at linebacker last night. And, and so, you know, it, it, it's been a struggle as far as, you know, competition on the field. And it, it's always rough when you got to play a lot of young kids and uh, inexperienced kids. Uh, but you hope that pays off in the long run, that they get those experiences. And by the time they're a junior and a senior, they've been through the war. They've been through it all and they know what to expect and they're mentally tough. Coach, one of the things Bill and I really watched last night, it was, was really surprised that was that trick play where you had the halfback. Remember that, Bill? We had that halfback throw the ball. And oh, yeah, the guy yeah, was yeah. wide yeah. open. Yeah. How, now, uh, you know, how did you decide to do that? Tell me about the development of that. that. And that's the, actually been uh, in the in the playbook for a while, and it's just looking for the right time to use it. And, wow. And we know. Well, when you got two quarterbacks on the field, yeah. it, can, it can really come into and, play. Yeah, and, we, and with <laughs> yeah. the way we like to use Lucas and, and, you know, putting him in motion and things like that, uh, we thought that would be a nice wrinkle because teams definitely flow to where he goes. Oh, they I know would. he's. I mean, if you look at their yeah. film, gee, many yeah. Christmas. And so we knew that would draw flow to his his level, and we know their safeties come downhill really fast, and so uh, we conceived that play when we we kind of start going to the 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 Jackson as quarterback and Lucas as a receiver, and we conceived that play knowing that. They'll suck up, and then we'll just he'll dump it over the top, and he throws well on the run, he so he's perfectly man. suited for that. So, uh, yeah, that's been in the works. That was part of the plan, and and looking for the right time to use it. And we have other trick plays uh, that you know it, it just you have to have the right situation, right yes. place on the field, right part of the game. You know, you're 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 getting an advantage at something, and so you you build off of that. Okay, suck up to that, and we're going to do this, or we'll, we'll give you this direction, and we'll come back the other, and so. Um, yeah, that was well executed, and that got us down where we need to be. It just that we have to execute and, and, and put that in the end zone. Yeah. Coach, appreciate you coming in today. This has been the Coach John Reedaboo Show here on 93.7 FM The Mix and 937themix.com. We hope you'll be with us Friday night as the Wabasee Warriors will host Plymouth for homecoming. While being by the radio would be great, we really hope that you'll be in the stands for that homecoming game. This is WRWTLP Syracuse. <laughs>